Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, episode number two of this second project where we learn Golang by building small little project. So uh, in this one, uh, we're gonna continue where we stopped uh, in the last video. <coughs> Sorry. So in the last video, we were able to uh, fetch some podcast information from the iTunes API. So here that was a pretty simple uh, get query to the iTunes uh, Apple API search where we put entity to, to podcast and we make sure we don't get any video or some stuff like that. We did set the term, make sure we did encode because in this case, if you look here, I do have space. If I don't encode, we get an error and stuff like that. So that was the first part. After that, we were also able to get the feeds of uh, this finality, this podcast. Uh, and this thing was again the, almost the same pattern. So that was um, we build an object from the XML stuff, and we just do a get request and we decode from the uh, XML new decoder. And finally, we were able to get some information. So if I'm running the uh, application right now, so this is what we got. We got all the stuff we need. The only thing is, it's not really like. Uh, um, friendly what i mean by that it's uh we have no kind of uh api for a user to use it like you can just put play so we cannot really change like the name of whatever of uh, what we do here so uh one thing you can do you can create a cli something like that but in your case we want to build that as a graphql layer so we can fetch those data inside our next part where we're going to build a react native project so for this thing, I'm gonna make use of a GQL gem. So that's the library I always recommend if you want to use a GraphQL with Golang. It's, I think it's really the best one. Um, the beauty of this one, it's, it really makes sure that everything is type safe because if you look at some other video, they do this kind of stuff like map string interface and I don't want that. If I'm using Go, one of the reasons is the strongly type stuff, so. So yeah, so the way that work, you're gonna see it's pretty simple. First thing, we did already that. So go mod in it, we did that in the last one. But now we want to go get this library. So you you go get this thing right there. I'm gonna put that inside my terminal. I'm gonna paste that. It just now you don't like the dollar sign. So I'm gonna say go get um, this library and now looks like you get pretty fast i think it came from my cache so now if i'm opening go the mod i have this library here right there so now i can use it and now what i want to do is i want to init my project okay so for that you just go in back in your terminal and you run go run the library so get a 99 design equal and you say init it takes some time and now look what is happening. They create some stuff for us. They create a server file where finally it just a plain server we get a port. So 8080 by default or that's gonna be the one you get from uh, the environment variable. After that here they create a server from the um, uh, the stuff they do with the generate where they take the resolver. And I don't like long line so uh what's going on here really trying to like yeah can make it like that and uh after that we have it so they use the plain http net package where they end up here we have the graphql playground that's going to be where we can uh, use it and finally they they just uh listen and serve from this port after that they create a gql gem yaml so here it's where you want to kind of put like okay where you want the model to be generate where do you want your resolver to get to and to be and stuff like that do you want to auto bind stuff and also here are some of the model like uh, if you want to plug some of the uh, like uh, uh, a new type system and stuff like that because example if you if you need some kind of date time or stuff like that you can put that there that they create a folder called graph. That's the only thing I don't really understand. I would have called that GraphQL, but it's okay. Inside that, they create a type resolver. <clears throat> and this type resolver, 
as you can see, follow an interface. And the interface it follow is the resolver root. And the reason why is because inside the schema resolver, the resolver right there have mutation and query. And because of this, if you look here and you follow the interface, you need the mutation and query. That's the only thing you need to get the interface uh, uh, valid. And they create this file where we put the schema GraphQL. But in our case, we don't want to use what they put because we don't care about the to-do list. What we build is a podcast kind of an aggregator. So, so here, this is where we're gonna start to put the, uh, the schema we want. So we start with a type and we're gonna start with a type podcast, okay? So for me, a podcast is gonna be the, uh, the podcast like uh, Joe Rogan, Full Stack Radio, that's the podcast. So we're gonna have an artist, gonna be a string and it's required. Why I say required? It's if you put the bank symbol, it cannot be known. After that, I'm gonna also have a podcast name. So artist, example in the, in the full stack radio, that while artist is Adam Wadam, so it's the name of the one who created the podcast and podcast name is full stack radio. After that here, we want the feed URL. And this one is really important because that's gonna be the one we use to fetch the stuff from the feed after that from the RSS. We're gonna also have a thumbnail. So inside our React Native app, we want to show some um, image. After that, we're gonna add uh, episode con. So this thing is gonna be just about like how many episodes this user have. Can be really nice when we show like the the podcast detail stuff in the front end. And also we want the jar. In jar, it's uh, an array of string string require. Okay, really? Okay. After that, the other type is gonna be the feed item. So feed item. It's finally, uh, sorry, I don't know why I tapped so bad today. So feed item is gonna be finally what we got from the feed here. So that's gonna be the stuff from this RSS stuff. So in the feed, what we need is the pub date. It's gonna be a type of string. We can transform that to a, a date time, but for now it's okay. We are also gonna get some text. Text is gonna be some HTML stuff where we can show uh, to then use our like the text of those uh, podcasts or so where you can get, like get the URL and stuff like that. After that, we also have a title. We also have a subtitle. We also gonna have a description. Can be really nice when you really want to show just, just a little amount of information. After that, we're gonna have an image. In this case, image gonna be a type string notable. The reason is because some of the image are Nullable for the feed item. After that, we have summary. Summary is gonna be a type string. Link URL is gonna be the link where you can read uh, the podcast. So when we did run it, that was this thing right there. All right, hey everyone, welcome to episode three of the full stack. So that's the thing we want to get. So that's the thing where in React Native, we're gonna be able to uh, download. And finally, the duration. The duration I want it as a number, but for now, it's going to be a type string. Finally, the only thing we need to do is to do a type query, where we're going to just build two query. The first one is going to be the search. The search is going to be the one where we want to get the podcast information. So I search for Joe Rogan. So I get the Joe Rogan information. So it's going to be a term. Term is going to be a type string require. And this thing is going to return an array of podcasts. After that here, we're going to add a feed URL. It's going to be a type of string. And this thing's going to return an array of feed item. So the feed is going to be, okay, I fed Joe Rogan. Give me the feed URL. I want to get his feed for the, the detailed page. Now I can get it. So that, that's it for the um, uh, schema GraphQL. Now the thing we want to do is to regenerate. Because right now, if you look here in the resolver in the model, the generation uh, generate stuff, it's all about to do, okay? And now the way we're gonna make it work, it's if you read here in the documentation, they talk about the generate. So, and you can run that. So you can put this thing at the top of your resolver file. So this line here, it's a generate, uh, um, 
uh, generate a script. So if you click here, you can uh, generate and it go uh, around GQL gen. And now when you regenerate, you see what's gonna happen? It's they create our model. So they create a feed items truck, update everything. And I really love the fact that they really follow like the camel case stuff. You do the same with the podcast. But now we have some error, okay? And one of the error is because if you go back to the schema resolver, look here. Warning, the code below was going to be delete. So they want to make sure that you want to delete that. And we want to delete this because what that means is we don't need those. And now, uh, here why you don't like it. Okay, so our crew resolver, get the resolver. Okay, and now the resolver don't follow. So what is missing? I'm gonna just put it back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, I think I just did it too much, that's why. One sec. So what my generate don't like. So resolve our root just one the query. So that mean here we can delete the mutation. We can delete this mutation resolver. I just think it's going on. They didn't really, um, they didn't really like a, uh, uh, see the types because it generates so it didn't uh, take time to index it so you see I just did it back but I have to delete that's it so now I'm gonna just rerun the generate and you see nothing is crashing the only thing I don't like is the fact that you don't do the thing with an importation but it's okay so now you see they create for us a search and a feed method on the query resolver so we can use those to return the thing now the only thing is, you remember this thing with the main? Here they have a server. And the thing is, um, I don't like to have my uh, server, I, I like everything to start from a, a main file. So I'm gonna do delete the server. So now I'm gonna just use the main. And now what I mean is now if I run the main, if, it, if everything is working, I should be able to open localhost EDED. And now we should be able to get some stuff. You see, we get the query and stuff like that. The thing is now, if I'm doing a search, uh, I'm gonna do this like that. After I'm gonna tell you why I named those things. So if I'm searching something, so uh, full stack radio, and I want to get the artist, I'm gonna always get internal error. And the reason is because if you look inside the uh, schema resolver, we just panic error because it's not implemented yet. So that's the thing we need to do. So if you remember what we've done in the other video, we were able to get the data. Now we just need to take those data and send it back as the GraphQL layer. So it's pretty simple. The only thing we need to do in our case is um, I know it's not best practice, but for now we're gonna go with that. We're gonna create our uh, iTunes uh, new iTunes uh, API services. Here we're gonna do our uh, res error where we get from that the search, and you see we have already the term here because it's type already, and this is what we ask in the schema GraphQL. After that, if we have an error and it's not known, we just need to um, return nil and error why we can return nil is because here we have a pointer after that we're gonna create here a variable where it's gonna be a, a podcast a sl a pointer slice to the model like that because now what we can do is we can look over the response so range res range res dot results and inside the result, we get access to each kind of podcast. So now we can create a podcast for us. And you see here, we need to return like, um, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to do model podcast like that. And I'm going to say fill all fill. So it's going to be simpler for me. So now what I, what I want to do is I can return the res that artist name right there for the artist res that podcast name 
uh, where is that track name that's the name track name also for the feed url it's feed url for the thumbnail uh, the one i want to use is the artwork 100 so it's the biggest one for the episode one it's the track count and for the jar is where's that jar so now here we look over each of the result we just create a podcast track and finally here we just need to append that so you say podcast uh, podcast equal append so this is the way you uh, uh, push to uh, slice and go you append you say hey the last version was that and now the only thing i want to add is podcast that's it and finally here at the end we return podcast and nil because we have no error so now if i'm rerunning um, the server and i go back here and i make sure to refresh and i'm searching i get artist is adam Wadden. so you see we can get some stuff uh, if we look for the podcast name in episode con, you see full stack radio and now we can also get the feed URL and the feed URL is the thing who if we take this one we should be able to get everything from the XML stuff of the RSS feed perfect so that was uh, the first one that was the search pretty simple nothing crazy here uh, so we can jump on the feed. The feed is going to be almost the same exact stuff. The only difference here is going to be we get that from the feeds. Get feed. Where we pass it, the feed URL we get here. After that, we're going to check if we have an error. If we have an error, we're going to return nil and error. The reason is because here we can return a pointer of a slice, so you can return nil. After that, like we did before, we're going to create a slice of model uh, model that feed item. After that, we just need to, uh, I don't remember why my four, I think it's like that. So that was feed item dot, uh, not feed item, that was res dot atom dot we channel sorry item now i can come back here i don't care about the i don't care about the index and here is going to be the uh, item that's it so now here same exact stuff so we create a feed item first we um i like when everything is filled so uh feed Feel all select so now here for the pop date really simple so you do item that pop date for the text oops item that text for the title item that title for the subtitle it's item that subtitle description description image we're gonna go there after that after that here we have access to item the summary item that link uh, exclusure enclosure the URL. So this is where we get the stuff to download the pizza. And finally, the duration item that duration. After that, we need to append this new item. To our already create slice where we pass the last version of the slice and we pass the feed item pointer and finally here we return the feed item and nil so if i restart important that you use okay, i'm gonna just save back that's gonna redo this for me okay so you see if i search full stack radio i get a feed url and now if you want to run two query without deleting the other one, you need to name your query. So this is what I, I say I've done before. So you do search like that. So now I can create a new query right there. Feed. Right here I can get my feed with a feed URL. I'm going to take the URL I just get. And now right there you can get like a title, image, link URL, and stuff like that. 
So now if I run it, you see we get everything. The image is just always nil. So we need to fix that. I'm gonna see it's gonna be pretty simple to fix this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna that yeah, it's easy, but it's not in same time. So in Go, that's one of the things I don't like, but in same time it makes sense. It's because you see here I need to return uh, a pointer to a string. But the thing is here the image href it's an image who can be empty okay it's not it can be nil it, it just can be like that and i want that to be transformed to a nil so the way i, I, I figure it out it's just because you cannot like use pointer and stuff like that it's just because uh, the 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 fault the default value of a string it's empty so when it's empty it's a valid string so I mean, maybe you have other solution, but for me, what I've decided to do is create a package called util where I put strings inside that. In this package, here I'm, I'm create just a function called check null string, where here finally you give it a string, and here I return to you a pointer to a string. And finally, here what I do is I check the length of the string. If the length of the string equals zero, I return nil else I return the str. Uh, yeah, but the uh, refrain like that. So now here, what I can do is I can take that, but put that inside my util that check new string like that. And now if I rerun my code, and I rerun that, you're gonna see here this image is null, but the other one is okay. So you see now at least you get null when it's really null because I don't want to send an empty string to the front end and the front end need to do this kind of logic. So, so yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy. Uh, it was pretty simple. I think for now we can keep it like that and jump on the react native portion. So I hope you enjoy and we talk in the next one. Bye everyone.